Luke knows a thing or two about discipline, being a, a professional soccer player for the last 15 years. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Tom. Dilly Dilly. Yeah. All right. What an awesome event. Great to see you guys, man. I look out here and I see an army. I mean, I am inspired. This is awesome. Uh, what a great group. What a great mission we have here. So Jesus said, I have not come for peace, but with the sword. You know, he came to call us to battle. Um, St. Paul says, put on the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation, the shield of faith, and the sword of the Spirit. Because we're meant for battle. We're meant for combat. And that's what we're built for. You know, and you notice in that scripture verse, he doesn't have anything covering our backs, right? Because that's what you guys are for. That's what we're for for each other. We got to cover each other's backs as we go into battle. You know, just like iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens the other. Um, when we are surrounded by men, when we're encouraging each other, when we have that uh, fellowship and accountability, we can be extremely powerful. And we were made to be powerful. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a power and love and self control. St. Paul says, and we harness that power through discipline. So I've been playing pro soccer for 15 years. This is my 15th season. I play with the switchbacks now. Uh, but when I first got drafted into the major leagues, and I went with New England Revolution for preseason, I was blown away by the level of intensity, um, the ferociousness, the courage, the, the passion, the work rate, and the intensity day in and day out. So at first I said, you know what, this is just preseason. Guys are fighting for spots. Um, you know, we're playing like it's a World Cup final every day because, you know, it's just early in the season. But as the season went on, that intensity only intensified or only increased. You know, and it was a very challenging environment. And I had to learn quickly um, that I had to develop these habits and form these disciplines or I would not be able to keep up and maintain a pro soccer career. And I was fortunately able to do that. So at first I was thinking, you know, maybe these guys are in the MLS because they're amazing soccer players. But later I realized these guys are amazing soccer players because they form the habit of courage, of passion, of grit, of resilience, of discipline. And they've implemented those habits. And that's why they're great players. And that's why I've been able to have a successful pro soccer player, uh, soccer career for the past 15 years. And um, discipline is just so important. You know, when we hear the word discipline, it means to train. It means to teach. Um, the root word discipline is, is also in disciple. And it's the foundational virtue. It's like the glue of all the other virtues because without discipline, we can't form the other virtues. Okay, so here we go. This is what um, Proverbs says. It says, whoever loves discipline loves knowledge, but whoever hates correction is just stupid. Um, so there you have it. So don't be stupid. Okay? Um, God disciplines us for good in order that we may share in his holiness. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained for it. Now, we're all called to be holy. We're all called to be saints. In order to do that, we've got to form holy habits. Um, Aristotle says, um, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, therefore, is not an act, but it's a habit. How do we form these habits over time and effort? We have a certain amount of willpower. We focus that willpower. We form that habit. Habits are easy to maintain, but they're tough to form. Um, the saints were so good at this. They're an amazing example. Um, saints have a great ability to do what they don't want to do. Mother Teresa, for example, she said, discipline is the bridge between goals and accomplishment. They can do what they don't feel like doing. If you continue to do what you've always done, you'll continue to get what you've always gotten. Okay? So discipline can be viewed like as the, the wings on a bird. You know, a bird could walk around mopey and discouraged and complaining like I have these, this burden on my back that is two-thirds of my body weight. And, you know, but when you exercise that virtue and when the bird uses those wings for what they're, flo what they're for, they fly and they soar to the heavens just like an eagle. And that's what it's like with discipline. And just like with sports, you know, we're not made great athletes um, but we train ourselves to get there. And same in the spiritual life, we can do similar. You know, we're not made saints, 
Um, but we can train ourselves to grow in that heroic virtue through forming holy habits. With Lent coming up, you know, we have a great opportunity to form habits, to grow in discipline, to implement certain virtues and work on them into our lives. So whatever those disciplines might be. Now in the context of this men's forum, we have three calls. And that's what I want to encourage you guys to. And the first one is evangelization. And we do that through the apostolate of friendship. Um, evangelizing through invitation. And so what we want to encourage you guys to do is have three friendships. Three friendships with other dudes that are intentional friendships and that are Christ-centered. And by doing this, just as Jesus did, you can transform your environment and you can transform the world. So, you know, you don't have to go make a thousand friends, but even those friends in your life, but make them Christ-centered. Make them intentional friendships. So that's one call. The other call is join a men's group. You know, once a month, go check that out. Be involved. Iron sharpens iron. And the third call is to pray. Ultimately, you'll check out those men card on the tables there. Take some as you go. But ultimately, we want to get everyone here to pray 30 minutes a day. I'm not there yet, but if you're not there, let's get to 10 minutes. Let's start there. Maybe we can start there at length. So those are three examples of spiritual disciplines that we can start to implement. So um, two-thirds of God's name is odd, right? Two-thirds of God's name is odd. It's okay to be odd. It's okay to be different. Go against the grain. Swim upstream against the current. We live in a culture that might not know that we're at battle, but we're at war. Two-thirds of God's name is go. Go. Make disciples of all nations, right? Go be a disciplined disciple. Be a saint. God bless you guys. Thank you.